Hello, my name is uh, Ryan Talbot Tabai, and um, I am the owner of uh, Sarah Talbot Tabai on YouTube. I also have a secondary YouTube channel, Sarah Talbot Tabai Productions, for everything that's not related to uh, 3D modeling and such. Today I'm going to show you how I would make a stone slash rock using ZBrush, 3D Max, and then Substance Painter. The first thing I would do is kind of look up some reference, so I'm just going to do a quick, I did a quick uh, search for stone, and so I got a couple of different images here I'm going to use, and I go over to my dashboard, I'll create a file, uh, RT for my initials underscore stone for YouTube. Then I would make a, a reference file, but I'm not going to keep any reference. So uh, first things first, let me open ZBrush. Now I'm using a 4K monitor, that's why this is so small. So I always go up to document, I just double it, and I zoom out. So the first thing I want to do is bring over a cube, bring it in, get edible zoom out on it and make poly mesh 3d go over uh, subdivide it a little bit uh, I'm not using my Cintiq today for this tutorial since it's gonna be pretty simple um, so I push B to open up my brushes um, I have all the defaults and a couple that I've downloaded off the internet uh, so then I'm gonna go M then T for move tropical to pop, uh, yeah, MT. All right, I can't say it. So, using the reference I have, I kind of so just move, keep forgetting, a large brush. kind of block this out. Uh, it doesn't have to look perfect and I don't have to worry about the quality at the moment. Just need to get the shape I'm going to build this uh, stone in. Uh, of course it's recommended to use a Cintiq or Wacom tablet but at, for this tutorial I don't really need to set up my Cintiq. So just uh, look at my reference here. So let me uh, fast forward the video and when I'm done kind of getting out the shape, I'll pick it up from there. All right, uh, now that I got a base shape here, I'm gonna divide it one more time. Um, as you can tell, you don't want that kind of topology. So I go over to uh, Z Remesher, set this to 100, 100, and just remesh it. And now I got the topology I want. So then I can kind of block this out a little bit better. So now that I've kind of gotten the shape that I want this rock to. Uh, be in, I'm going to divide it a couple of times until I get about half a million, push B for brush, then go back to T for and D for trim dynamic, bring down the drawing size, intensity to like 20, and I'm going to kind of just go around in circles and chip at this a bit. All right, uh, I'm done using uh, Trim Dynamic. Uh, so next thing is, if you look at the 
reference there's these little cuts in there you can kind of see them on uh, these type of rocks here um, it would be best to use a tablet like I said for that kind of stuff but for today just got a damn straight uh, damn standard sorry I like to use freehand I'll bring this way down to 15 bring this down to 15 as well just kind of cut in there like so uh, zoom in on there a little bit more so and then kind of build up the border I need to Increase the poly count. Or subdivide, whatever you want to call it. Then I kind of use shift right here. Just kind of smooth that part out. Do the same here. So then go over to clay build up bring this up too much set that to like a five kind of build up the clay or build up the geometry so let's move it out without smoothing the edge there. Let's zoom out. Um, so let me work on this and then I'll start up the, oh, never mind. Uh, and then kind of chip away down here like so. Move this out uh, without smoothing that. Without trying, try your best not to touch that there because you want that hardness. So, and in a minute, you'll see why. So kind of carve away. Add it there. Cut at that. Smooth this out. Bring the subdivide down a little so you can smooth that out a little bit better. Same thing here. So after doing that, H polish. Wonderful tool. Oop, too much. Bring this down. Set this to a 10. And what it's gonna do is give me that sharp edge that I want. If I hold down uh, Alt, kind of use it to build, give me that sharp edge. Kind of flatten it. And of course, a pin, last time I'll say it, come in handy here to kind of give these sharp edges especially with that touch sensitivity but I don't have the time so uh, at this moment I'm going to now that I've shown you pretty much what my process is stop the uh, talking and put it back in a time lapse
Um, now that I'm kind of done with what I'm doing, uh, just for my preferences when it comes to my rocks, I uh, throw a later on there. Go back to uh, clay buildup. Excuse me. Uh, change this to that alpha uh, to alpha twenty three spray, and I bring the intensity down to like a one large draw size. Oh, wrong alpha. Uh, it's alpha seven. Still too intense. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a reason why I use the layers. Just kind of spray a couple of bumps all over. And then with the layers, I can turn the intensity down or up a little, as much as I want. So then I go over to the layer one, I invert it. a little so here's without it so probably negative 0 0.01 or negative 0 0.05 negative 0 0.1 negative 0 0.5 there we go it kind of breaks up the surface and gives it sort of like a, uh, a, cro a corrosion look I know I'm butchering the word, but like it's been rained on and out in the public, uh, out in nature. So, um, so now that I like, uh, I got the rock the way I want it to be. This is plenty. I saved the ZBrush file. Go over to desktop, the stone. Just call this RT underscore stone. Now I export it, and I call this high, H-I, for the high poly. Open up Z, uh, Photo, um, 3D Max 2017, display, and now this is what I do all the time, Just select display, edge face there, high quality. Now I import the rock that we just, um, well, that we just made, so... Where is it? RT Stone for YouTube. Bring in the high poly. It's 4 million polygons in uh, 3D Max, looks like. Might be wrong. 2 million. Okay. Now, that's tiny. I want a large stone. So going to this larger now after doing that go over to restart X forms reset it then I can lapse it as a polygon again from high quality let's go to DX mode so it runs a little bit better um, get rid of that grid do not move this it's crucial you do not move this re-export it back to the OBJ it was well, it could be an FBX as well, but make sure that stuff is on. Uh, when it's done exporting, I'll continue the video. All right, now that it's uh, done exporting, let's make this into a low poly for a game. Now, it's a large rock. So like I said earlier, 100 polys, that might be good, but let's just do a little bit more for a large rock. So pro optimize. Calculate it, and I'll continue when it's done. Uh, now that it's done calculating, I write in 100. Push uh, seven. Oh, push seven. So the verts is seven, ten polygons. Put that at 100. Makes it 196. Uh, let's put this at 85. Yeah, let's put this at 150 verts. So, 
110. That works. So 216 uh, polygons, 110 verts. So now that that's done, uh, make a, a polygon. But it's still not ready to go into Substance Painter. We still gotta un unwrap it, UV unwrap it. So go over to UV unwrap. Unwrap UV. Open the editor. Move that to the side there. Let's do it like so. I'm just gonna cut it in half. Uh, for time being, uh, for time being sake. Just grab the whole thing and quick peel. There you go. Uh, and then a good way to check is go to select inverting, no inverting, no overlapping. And click this button here. Oh, sizes it for you perfectly. So now click that. Now export this. Export it selected. OBJ. Do not save over your high poly. Name that low. Save. Export. Done. The reason you don't want to move this from the space is because you're going to project the high poly onto the low poly. Now um, I'm going to open up uh, Substance Painter. All right. Now that I have uh, Substance Painter 2 up, let me just close that stuff out. Oops, click that button by accident. Go over to File new I I use Unreal Engine 4 so I'm gonna keep it there the document resolution 2048 select now uh, you go over to your stone you select the low poly one if you had any like material uh, uh, textures you already made you can throw them in there and just open it up so you can paint directly onto the unwrap or you can paint on there but we're not gonna really paint um, just yet I go to bake I turn off ID because I don't use it let's put it at 2048 I mean because you always scale it down in Photoshop or in whatever program you're using put in the high poly there uh, anti-aliasing I like to go two by two at least and uh, then I'm gonna click bake and I'll continue this after it's done baking all right, it's uh, done baking. So you got the unwrap, uh, you got the high poly on the low poly. To show you what I mean. That's without the normal, with the normal. Uh, ambient occlusion, not really needed, but it's still there. So first thing first, let's go over to materials. Uh, there's a couple of materials in here, like RT snow, the metal. Uh, the concrete I made these the wood I made them uh, I'm currently still in school and my teacher does not let me use any of the stuff that's already in there uh, you're probably not in school and you probably just bought this off steam uh, or you you have a uh, trial so it's alright you can use these I'm not gonna hold it against you so what I like to do is for my projects and stuff maybe mortar wall or concrete start with concrete because that is something I did make in substance designer there we're done of course I'm just joking um, let's just use the mortar wall so I mean that that looks pretty that doesn't look good not gonna lie so the color doesn't matter let me make this 10 by 10 okay five what matters is the normal and height. So turn on normal and height. Don't really need any of this crap. So then don't really need the height either, just the normal. Throw another layer on top, a color layer. And uh, let's bring back my reference. over to the side here uh, 
the base color. Let's use this rock. Cool thing is you can just kind of go over and pick this light color right here. So then let's change the roughness. Get rid of its roughness. Get rid of the metallic. Then throw another base color on top and do the same thing. But this time, this time let's pick the darker color. And there you go. Now, same thing. Doesn't really need roughness. Maybe a little bit of metallic on it. Let's give this 0.25 on, no, this 0.02 on the height. And then go over to Smart Masks. And based on what I'm seeing over here, uh, let's give it something like, ooh, uh, what's a good one? Dirt heavy. Let's see if that works. Let's just throw a smart mask on there. Uh, well, we can work with this, but let's do dirt dusty. Now let's play around with the mask. So, give it, mess around with the contrast. So, let's increase that to like 0.2. Uh, so, now you're seeing the texture seam. If, I think, a little bit of stretching, but I think this will work. You could always cover that up. Uh, of course, I, you know, I'm just doing this quickly. Uh, when you do your unwrap, of course, you want to do it uh, a little bit better than what I did. Let's get that point one. Uh, let's throw another base color on there. I noticed a little bit of green. So let's grab a little bit of that green like as the moss let's do get rid of the, that did have a little bit of metallic and go in with the height so let's do ground rust uh, again let's not focus on that only because I, again, didn't do a majorly good unwrapping. But cool thing is that I learned with uh, Substance Painter is I can just go back over to 3D Max. Go to my unwrap. So let, let's say I need to fix my unwrap. Whoever I'm making this for, is they're not happy I did that. I, I wouldn't be happy. I'm not happy that I did do that, so let's fix that. All right, now that I'm done fixing the UV, go to Project Configuration, uh, re-import it with the new UVs. So, uh, you don't have to delete, sorry. What you have to do is bake the textures again. So let me bake the textures and uh, recontinue where I left off. All right, now it's done baking the textures. Check the UVs, some slight stretching, but we could always make sure that those areas would be like underground or covered with another rock or something for what we're doing right now. It's perfect. So now let's fix that moss. Um, let's go over here. Let's get rid of that mask. Remove 
remove mask. Ground dirt. Kind of growing. Right. If you hold down shift, right, you can change the lighting. So the moss is kind of growing on it. So now let's play with the mask over here. So it's kind of covering up that stretching over there, so it's not as noticeable. Ground dirt. Let's give it slight. So um, I don't like these spots the more I look at them. So let's kind of fix that. Now let's give it some of that rough edge. Let's do it on top. By rough edge I mean some of that. Let's pick a light color but a little bit darker than our base. There we go. So, that just a little bit lighter. A little metallic. Now let's pick something like surface worn. Just give it a little bit that look That's what happens if you throw that out there that works pretty well it's a little bit darker uh, throw a little bit more dirt on there you want to work with less. Let's give it some darkness. Again, it's a rock, so it doesn't really need roughness. Let's give it a some subtle scratches. No sharp damage. That do anything. So some of these masks won't do anything depending on your geometry, so you just kind of play around with them. And some of them will create your uh, seams a little bit more noticeable. There we go. We'll just bring it down on the normal. So it's not as noticeable. Um, so I, I, I like the rock the way it is. I like how it came out. <coughs> <coughs> so I like the way the rock came out. Um, so we're pretty much done with the rock. If um, this is the way I want it to look for my game, this uh, the way the rock is now. So let's do a test. Uh, to do a test render, you would go to mode rendering. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll have what it looks like uh, done. Um, but to export it now that you're ready to put this on your uh, mesh for in game, go over to export textures. And then 
the way I do it is I always go to there. Textures, select the folder, and from there I like to do just the, where is it, there you go, uh, additional maps, no, wrong one, it's, There you go. So I can get the AO, the normals, metallic roughness, height, and base color. Export it. And there's your materials ready to be thrown on the mesh for an Unreal. Thank you for uh, watching this tutorial. I'm sorry that it was sort of all over the place. Um, I would prefer to do a better tutorial in the future if you have anything you would like to see 3D modeled, textured, or made in 3D Max, ZBrush, or Substance Painter, please uh, leave a comment below and uh, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. Um, you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook. And thank you. Have a nice day.